They were perfect teens, high school sweethearts. Then she got pregnant, they got scared, and the baby ended up dead. And that was the lead line in a Newsweek article about Amy Grossberg and Brian Peterson when their lives were no longer private. Remember them? Some of you may. The New Jersey teens, both 18, whose shocking baby dead and dumpster and baby slayer story made headlines around the world. That was 1996. Amy delivered her baby boy in a Comfort Inn motel in Newark, Delaware. In November, assisted only by her then boyfriend, Brian Peterson, who later threw the baby into a dumpster. She successfully hid the pregnancy from her parents wanting mostly to shield the truth from her mother. She wore baggy clothes and avoided her parents for the course of the nine months. In September, she enrolled as a freshman at the University of Delaware in Newark, while Brian enrolled at Gettysburg College in Pennsylvania. Now, two weeks before Thanksgiving, her water breaks, just after midnight on November 12th. So she calls Brian crying, asking him to come get her. She was in a complete panic told him she wasn't sure if it was her water that broke, but she felt like she had peed her pants, that something had happened, and she was in a lot of pain. Amy was in serious denial for her entire pregnancy. She would constantly tell Brian she wished it to go away. She begged him to make it go away. She wanted her baby in her belly to magically disappear. Poof. She kept wishing this, not preparing for anything. She just did not look ahead. She did not look into the future with her child. So at this moment, it's almost 1 a.m. and Brian still has to get gas before he drives the two plus hours to go pick her up at her dorm. Brian doesn't want this baby. He doesn't want to see, hold, hear, smell, or feed this baby, but he loves Amy. The drive between Gettysburg and Newark is frustratingly slow and boring, but he makes it without falling asleep or getting into an accident, and Amy is there waiting outside for him because she didn't want her roommate to know what was going on, even though her roommate had highly suspected it already. Plus, there was a lot of talk about this situation going around with her floor mates, but Amy felt it was such a taboo subject. She believed she was fooling her schoolmates just like she had been fooling her parents. Anyway, so they just drive, not knowing where to go. They had no plan. It's after three in the morning and Amy just wants a place to lie down. She's now having contractions. Brian wants to take her to the hospital, but Amy said absolutely not because she doesn't want her parents to know. He sees a comfort in and pulls right in, runs in and pays the $52, then gets Amy and they get in the room and she delivers the baby. She then ordered him to get rid of it, quote unquote. He complies by putting the baby in a garbage bag and then tosses it into a dumpster. But the secret about this gets out because when Amy returned back to her dorm at the University of Delaware, she got so sick. She had to be hospitalized, and the doctors figured out pretty fast that she delivered a baby because she still had the placenta. Conflicting stories about the events remain a mystery to anyone except this couple, but Brian and Amy claim they believed the infant to be a stillborn. But the couple's initial claim that the child was stillborn was quickly rejected because an autopsy indicated that the infant was delivered alive and... The autopsy also showed skull fractures and brain injuries from blunt trauma and shaking, also known as shaken baby syndrome. So Amy and Brian, who seemed to be a loving couple, soon turned on each other and each began blaming the other. The following month in December, they were indicted for the murder. Brian stated emphatically that Amy told him to get rid of it, quote unquote. 
but Amy claimed that Brian acted alone in putting the boy in the dumpster. The following year, in March 1998, Brian pled guilty to manslaughter in exchange for his testimony against Amy at the trial. In addition to his claims, he stated that he tried to get Amy to a hospital, but she refused. When Amy heard Brian's statement in full detail, she agreed to a plea bargain. She admitted to unintentionally causing the death of the infant and said that she and Brian never planned to kill the baby. And while Brian was sentenced to two years, Amy was held to be more responsible and was sentenced to two and a half years. At her sentencing, Amy, who had denied her pregnancy, denied giving birth, and then blamed Brian for killing the baby, nevertheless pleaded for leniency and told the judge, I want to help others. I want to make a difference. I mean, she sounds kind of psychotic. Anyway, they both didn't serve their full sentences and got out early. And after Brian left prison, he ended up marrying a Jersey girl and fled 1,200 miles away down to Florida, where he ended up working for his stepfather in Jupiter. And Amy, she started her own business. It was called Just Because Invitations, which was a custom-made greeting card and announcement service using Sororski crystals. Some of those dainty announcements were made for other people's babies. So weird and detached she remained to be from what she did. I read that after she got out of jail, she talked at a high school, talk about teen pregnancy, but it did not go over well because the teachers and the students felt she was not remorseful in what she did. And I imagine that she told the story like she was reading a newspaper. I mean, remember, she had no connection to her baby during and after her pregnancy. That little life was never wanted. She wished it away and called him an it. What is also so sad is officials who run this burial park have never met Amy or Brian or either set of the baby's grandparents. No one comes here to mourn this little boy. That's what they said. And after this little boy's death, with all his heinous injuries, he laid unclaimed in a Delaware morgue for weeks. Here he is, buried in a donated coffin. Nobody from the Grossberg or Peterson families attended the burial. It's like he never existed. You did exist. In a lot of hearts here, little boy, you are not an it. You came into this world as a perfect little boy. You could have been adopted by a couple who would have cherished you, loved you unconditionally, and had a brilliant, wonderful life. I am so sorry what they did to you, and I hope you didn't feel the pain of their unforgivable crimes. You will never be forgotten. <laughs>